Hi everyone, my name is Esther, and we're celebrating Easter around here by continuing our series called who is Jesus? And that's a really important question because the more you ask about Jesus, the more you'll get to know him. We're going to talk about that question more today, but first, I want to know this. Have you ever been in a conversation that got really intense or really fast? You're talking about a group project at school and everyone's on the same page until you realize someone isn't doing their job. Now the conversation isn't so easy. Or you're on vacation with your family at the beach and you're about to dive into the ocean when you hear your dad say, there's a shark out there, I think there's a shark. Now, that changes the vibe, doesn't it? So when I was younger, my brother and I shared a car, my parents' car. One day I come to ask for permission to use the car and then my brother hears me and he comes into the conversation and it got ugly pretty fast. I mean, it all started from I asked first to who do you think you are? You think you're everything. You think everything you do is important. It's not like you're solving the world's problems. I mean, talk about taking a turn, right? And why am I bringing this up? Because sometimes I feel that way around this time of year. I mean. Easter seems pretty chill, right? People are wearing bright colors, everyone's eating peeps, there's pictures of bunnies and baby chickens everywhere. The whole holiday is kind of a fun and cute and cool until you show up at church and you hear stories about Jesus being betrayed by his friends, arrested for stuff he didn't do, left to die on the cross, literally killed by other people. Um, what? That's intense. And then someone like me tells you that this is what Easter is all about. And you're like, huh? What happened to the bunnies? And the chocolate and the eggs? Well, you're right. At Easter, we do celebrate the most important and intense moment in history. We talk about when Jesus died on the cross and eventually came back to life. And while it's a really cool and important story, it's also one that leaves us asking, why did that happen? If if you're grown up in church, then you might know the answer most people give here, that Jesus died on the cross for our sins. Now sin just means the things we do that keep us from a close relationship with God. Jesus died to take the punishment for our sins, to make things right between God and us, to let us be close to God again. And while all of that sounds great, I'm not sure it really answers the question. Because if we're honest, we we'll probably admit that we don't always feel like our sin is a big deal. I mean, murder? Sure, that's really bad. But cheating on a test, stealing, using someone else's Netflix password to avoid paying for yourself? Is that sin? And if it is, is it really that big of a deal? So big of a deal, someone had to die for it? The truth is, sin is really a big deal. It has a way of destroying things that are important to us. Now think about it. When was the last time someone hurt you? or lied to you, or embarrassed you. When that happened, it probably destroyed something for you. Maybe it messed up your friendship, your day, or how you feel about yourself. Of course, this goes both ways. When you hurt someone else, break a rule, or lie, something is broken that is really hard to fix. That's because sin has a way of destroying things. Most of the time, sin hurts us or someone else, and that's a big deal. And if you're someone who believes in or follows Jesus, it can feel like your mistake have destroyed your relationship with God too. Whatever you did or didn't do feels like it's keeping you from being close to God. The truth is that we all have this struggle because we all make mistakes. We all do things that hurt other people or ourselves, whether we mean to or not. In other words, we all struggle with sin and that has the potential to destroy things that are important to us. It can also hold us back from the relationship God wants with us. And that's exactly where this comes in. Jesus did everything he could to make sure we belong with him. Jesus made a way for us to be close to God, to have a relationship with God, to know that nothing can hold us back from that. But if that's true, why don't we always feel that way? When we mess up or, or we make mistakes, who is Jesus then? And how does that change the way we feel about our relationship with God? Good question. And to answer that, I want to look back not just back to when Jesus was alive, but back hundreds of years before that. In a book of the Bible called Isaiah, we find words shared from a prophet by the same name. In ancient times, God used prophets to give his message to people. 
Guys like Isaiah were important because they shared God's direct words with the world. The verse we're going to look at today points us back to the truth of why Jesus did what he did for us. The truth we remember at Easter. All of us, like sheep, have strayed away. We have left God's path to follow our own. Yet the Lord laid on him the sins of us all. Now check that first part, all of us. Sin isn't a thing that bad people do. It's a thing that all people do. We all have sin. We all have done things that hurt us. We all have made mistakes that hurt the people around us. So what do we do with that? Well, as Isaiah says, that's where Jesus comes in. He took the responsibility for our mistake. Whatever you think you owe him, paid. Whatever payback a normal person would expect, no longer needed. Whatever you and I think we have to do to get right before we have a relationship with Jesus, no longer necessary. Jesus took care of all of that for us. If sin costs something, Jesus paid it. In fact, years later, as Jesus lived out the words Isaiah said, he hung on a cross. Wooden pieces just like this one, were used to torture and kill people in Roman history. Even though Jesus had done nothing wrong, he was sentenced to die here. And as he died, his friend John was there. John later wrote down the last words of Jesus. Jesus knew that his mission was now finished. And to fulfill scripture, he said, I am thirsty. A jar of sour wine was sitting there. So they soaked the sponge in it, put it on a hyssop branch, and held it up to his lips. When Jesus had tasted it, he said, it is finished. Then he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. In Jesus' last moments, when he knew he had done what he came to do, he asked for a drink, then said, it is finished. Those are big words. What is finished? Sin and all that comes with it. The whole thing, the whole idea of sin keeping us from being close to God. The system that tells us that we can't come to church because we have messed up, or we can't serve because we have sinned, or we can't be close to God because we aren't perfect as He is. The whole system that tells us that you can't be close to God until you pay God back for all the bad stuff you do. In Jesus' last moments, He told us that is finished. Gone no more. Now you might be thinking, why would Jesus give his life for us? Well, because he loves us so much. We are that important to him. Let's think about it for a second. What is your most important thing? Your life. Well, Jesus gave his most important thing. He gave his life. That's the biggest thing he could give. He did this because you matter so much to him. Jesus knew every mistake you would ever make, even the ones you haven't made yet. He paid for all of your sins before you could ever sin because he loves you that much. So no matter what you've done, remember that it's paid for. It's done, finished forever. Because of Jesus, your mistakes don't hold you back. As we celebrate Easter, I want you to think about two big ideas. Because of Jesus, your mistakes don't hold you back. If you've been holding back in your relationship with Jesus, holding back on the decision to follow Jesus, or holding back on the decision to live like Jesus, you don't have to. You can dive head first into a relationship with him right now. And you don't need to change one thing before you do because Jesus loves you so much, no matter what mistakes you've made or will ever make. I know it can be easy to be hard on ourselves when we mess up, but when that happens, remember that God loves you so much that God sent Jesus to take care of our sin forever. God did that because he loves us that much. So today, remember that God loves you. And because of that, your mistakes can't hold you back. Next, because of Jesus, no one else's mistakes hold them back either. Maybe you need to remember this is true for someone else. Maybe you've let someone else's mistakes convince you that they don't belong with God. Maybe you believe that they need to pay for their mistakes, that they need to behave better before they can have a relationship with God. Maybe you've looked at someone in church or in your group and thought, why are they here? If that's you, today can be the day that you change your mind, 
that you remember what Jesus did for all of us, that you extend forgiveness to someone else because you know their mistakes don't have to be the end of their story, that you welcome them into your group because you know nothing can keep anyone from knowing Jesus. Before we close today, I want us to think back to Jesus' words on the cross. It is finished. The word Jesus actually used was to tell us tie. In Jesus' time, that word was used on business documents to say something was paid or the dead was gone. Today, we use a big red stamp for the same reason. Just like this, it's a reminder that it is finished. And because of that, nothing stands between you and God. Listen, whether your mistakes feel big or small, I know this for sure. It's really difficult to believe that those things don't hold us back. This is where group can be such a big deal. Sometimes you need a friend or a trusted leader to remind you what's true, to help you remember that God loves you, that God wants to be close to you, that because of Jesus, your mistakes don't hold you back. So would you consider opening up to your group about some things you may be thinking or feeling today? Let them remind you of who you are because God loves you not just at Easter, but all the time.